this is John Amato with Crooks and Liars, and I am joined by a very special guest, Miss Shock Doctor herself, Naomi Klein. Naomi, thanks for joining Crooks and Liars and jumping back into the blogosphere. Great to talk with you. Well, it's a busy time today. Uh, I'm sure everybody's asking your opinion on what's going on. And just real quick, you know, tell people what really the shock doctrine is and what is disaster capitalism? Well, the shock doctrine is a political strategy that the right has been perfecting over the past 35 years to use to various, to various different kinds of shocks. They could be wars, natural disasters, economic crises, anything that sends a society into a state of shock to push through what economists call economic shock therapy, rapid-fire pro-corporate policies that they couldn't get through if people weren't in a state of fear and panic. Um, and this is obviously a, a move that the Bush administration is very, very fond of. Um, they did it after 9-11 um, and privatized uh, the war on terror. Um, and we are seeing the shock doctrine in action right now um, with the exploiting of people's fear, trying to deepen that fear. Um, we saw that with Bush's address uh, to ram through uh, in, uh, just unprecedented uh, corporate giveaways. Um, which will later be used to rationalize cuts to social programs and more privatization and deregulation in the name of getting the economy back on track after they've screwed it up. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. It, we are really witnessing it with firsthand up close and personal. And now at least you know, with your book and with your ideas, we have a blueprint to draw on to actually see how all this is, is taking place. And again, and you know, when you look at $700 billion, and then you go, well, how much is Barack Obama's uh, you know, nationalized health care? I mean, something, what was, uh, I saw something, $85 billion. Well, when you're talking about $700 billion and $85 billion, you know. A billion is AIG bailout alone. But there you go. We'd rather you know, bail out AIG than help the American people with universal health care. And it's really a sad state of affairs. Um, and today has been, as you know, a three-ring circus. It has, and I think it's really important for people to understand that this bailout is as bad tomorrow as it was today. Um, and the only thing that's changed is its bipartisanship. Uh, a couple um, fig leaves have been you know, put in front of it uh, to make it a little more presentable, but the core of this deal is totally corrupt. Um, it is a bad plan. The only, the only people that this plan is good for uh, is Wall Street. There's no, and no, no guarantee uh, that it's going to fix the problem that it is supposedly going to fix, but one thing we do know is that it is a bomb that will explode uh, on U.S. taxpayers because of uh, this massive debt that has been incurred. I mean, this, this, what the, this $700 billion is a, a twice as large as the projected deficit uh, for this year. Uh, so this is an incredible burden. Um, this was described, you know, that these bad debts were described as sticks of dynamite in these companies that the government is taking out of their hands. Well, it's not just taking them out of their hands because now the dynamite is all in Washington and it's going to explode. And then it will be used uh, against uh, whichever administration. You know, you said if, if Obama wins, um, then this will be the dynamite that will be used to say that he can't afford his health plan. That's right, and if McCain gets in, then he can cut every program he wants in the name of saving America. I'm cutting this to save America. I mean, this jingoism is just is, is sickening. Uh, and this whole, you know what the Democrats should do, real quick, they should just, when, when McCain said he was going to suspend his campaign and go to Washington, they all should have just left. They said, you know what, if John McCain is coming here, we will not have a deal. Because if this is all political theater, it, it, it's, you know, it, obviously we know what's going on, and, and I think a lot of people do see it, too. Uh, usually, you know, people get frustrated about the average American voter uh, because they're just not, you know, I mean, they're, they're worried about their lives, and they're not into the whole that's and bolts of what's going on. But I think American people, as we've been seeing polls, have been saying that they, they know it's a political stunt. But this is textbook. 
book Republican Disaster Capitalism, right? They come in, Paulson, Bernanke, the sky is falling, we have to do something now, and now they're going to make John McCain like the king to come in and swoop in. And again, who will fill, fit the bill? Americans. Well, and I mean, the other thing I think um, that, that, that we need to stress is just the extraordinary level of irresponsibility uh, in, in the Bush administration in allowing this crisis to get to the point that it, that, that it got to, which was not just predictable, but predicted by many, many people. You know, Alan Greenspan was saying a year ago that there was a housing bubble, you know, and what bubbles do is they burst because they're filled with hot air. Everyone knows it. This was entirely... Uh, you know, uh, and this was entirely uh, predicted, um, and they end up with a two and a half page, barely two and a half page plan with one idea, which is to turn the U.S. government into the world's biggest trash can. Take all of this trash and give it to the taxpayers. That is their only idea, their only preparation. That was the most insane thing I've ever seen. And, of course, John McCain, I don't, he hasn't read those two and a half pages yet. No, he didn't but, have time. Right? And I have to say, I really do, I've said this before, but I really think that their biggest mistake was how short it was. Um, because it was short enough that people actually read it. I mean, usually what they do is ram through legislation that's hundreds of pages long and, and, and say we have to do it in two days and nobody has a chance to read it. And then they read it after the fact. Um, but I think in this case, brevity really was their downfall. <laughs> you know, one, <laughs> For the first time. One thing um, that I think, it's, I think it is really important to resist this this, uh, this bipartisanship at this point. This is not a moment actually where the priority is bipartisanship. The priority is intelligence. The priority uh, is is getting to the root of this problem. Uh, the financial sector uh, has abused the trust of the American people. And there's a couple of other points I just want to stress. This idea of John McCain scapegoating greedy CEOs is obviously a joke because he's flanked by some of the greediest CEOs uh, um, in the world. Um, but, but the real issue is, you know, you can't be shocked by the, the, the fact that CEOs want to make as much money as they possibly can. You know, that's like being shocked that movie stars want to be famous, you know, um, and that politicians want power. Um, this is what corporations are built to do. This is what CEOs are built to do. And it's the role of government to regulate those CEOs. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, the, have C the, game. the CEO pay with their floor. It's almost like the MacGuffin, right? The, the MacGuffin of this whole thing. Because, oh, yes, you know, they got 42 million or they got 20 million, and that's horrible. But when you're talking about seven or billion dollars. 20 million really is inconsequential. It's about the abuse that you were talking about, this whole system. And you know, in, did you get a chance to read Paul O'Neill's book uh, that Ron Susskind yeah. wrote? Yeah. And, and in it, you know, the most fascinating chapter I wrote was when he wanted CEOs to be accountable. And it was the CEOs that called Bush. Like, and he, in his book, he said they were his base. And, and so the CEOs revolted and said they'd rather resign than actually sign a paper that says that their books were in order. Uh, I mean, you know, this is, this is insane. Where you must remember that Henry Paulson was chosen to replace Paul O'Neill because he was a team player. This bubble was not only going to burst, it was going to explode like no other yeah. bubble before it. And they all knew it. They all knew it, and they were making money as fast as they could um, based on their belief that they would get bailed out. Um, because, of course, it's entirely consistent with the administration over the past seven years. You know, one of the, one of the other big lies floating around is the idea that this is somehow a departure um, from the way the Bush administration usually does business. It's not a departure. It's just a change in the direction of the flow. You know, for, for this is what they have been doing for seven years is transferring public money, public wealth, into the hands of private crony contractors. And now, as their final act, they are taking the bad debts of the corporate sector and transferring it into the taxpayers. There is no aberration here. There is no big surprise. This is entirely consistent with everything they've done.